Range. There are two different ways of giving electric cars more range. Number one, give it a bigger battery. Simple, yet effective, although it does hinder lots of other aspects of the car, like ride comfort, handling, performance. The better way, the more elegant way of giving an electric car more range is via efficiency. And we're here in Germany today to take a look at a new electric car that is a masterclass in efficiency. A car that can do 1,000 kilometers on a single charge. It's just a concept for now, but it showcases a plethora of technologies that you will be seeing on the next generation of electric Mercedes-Benz cars. This is the incredible EQXX and this is fully charged. We are back! The world's number one clean energy and electric vehicle live show. Featuring all your favorite things, like tons of test drives, live theater sessions, interactive home energy experiences, all manner of electric vehicles, and the always popular Kid Zone. Get your tickets now. Okay, we have very little time with this car today and I've just had my brain absolutely scrambled by a 30 minute incredible presentation from various people who were part of putting this car together. I'm astonished by the amount of incredible technology on this thing. I'm gonna to try to pack it all into this video in a way that is not completely confusing uh, and without my entire brain melting midway through the video. Let me start off by saying it looks quite finished, doesn't it? This is no motor show queen, this is functional. This is a proper test bed of lots of different technology. Mercedes is going to road register this car and do a lot of driving in it to learn from it and then implement that learning into future cars. Also worth noting that this car is a joint venture between multiple different departments of Mercedes-Benz, including the Formula One team and the Formula E team. I think everyone wanted a piece of this action. Are you ready for the numbers? Here are the numbers, 1,000 kilometers on a charge, that's about 620 miles. Just to break that down, that means this car uses less than 10 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, or to flip that in a way that makes slightly more sense in my brain, that's six miles per kilowatt hour. Incredibly efficient. And there are so many clever things at play here in order to achieve that, but one of the obvious ones is aerodynamics. The car is ultra slippery, drag coefficient of 0.18. Keep in mind, the slipperiest car on the road today is the Mercedes EQS with 0.20 drag coefficient. This has it beaten. Let's begin at the front as we always do. And it's worth keeping in mind that everything you see on this car is functional. Nothing is purely for design's sake except for these little stars, they're just really cool. But I'll give you a few examples. Obviously, we've got the recognizable EQ face. Down here, we have the only air intake anywhere at the front. It's actually closed most of the time. This is a really cool thing. The car isn't especially powerful. It doesn't use a lot of power. It doesn't need a lot of power because it's so aerodynamic. And as a result, you don't need to do an awful lot of cooling of that battery. In fact, for the most part, like I said, this air intake is closed and underneath the car is a cooling plate, quite literally just a big piece of metal. The wind flies past it, it cools down and that cools the battery. And that's sort of all it needs in terms of cooling. If you need a bit more than that, this air intake opens and it lets the car breathe a little bit more. Also, the air comes out through these nostrils in the bonnet and sweeps over the car, creating, you know, slipperiness. Now then, the wheels. Aerodynamicists hate wheels because they are a source of turbulence. They disrupt the airflow 
over the car and around the car. They make it less slippery. That means it uses up more energy to push through the air. A few solutions here. First one, we've got these nice covered rims. That's pretty common. We see that on most electric cars, although they are beautiful, aren't they? Look at the design of those. The other thing we have is this air curtain here and this breather at the back here. So the air enters through here, sweeps over the covered wheel, exits here, flows along the car without causing too much disturbance. More aerodynamic touches along the side. Look at these wing mirrors. Is that not the coolest and most slippery wing mirror you ever did see? And just look at the side profile of this thing. How do you make something so functional, so beautiful? Look at this rear deck. It's absolutely gorgeous. And again, functional. We see this combination of soft sweeping lines and sharp edges, but it's all on purpose. The best way to break the air at the back of the car, aerodynamically speaking, is very cleanly with a sharp line. So the air cuts off sharply here and flows behind the car with minimal turbulence. Other thing worth noting, there will be solar panels adorning this roof, which will give you another 25 odd kilometers of range. It doesn't currently have them because they are literally testing them at this exact moment. So at the moment, just a black roof, but solar panels will be there. Here's one of the things I love about this car. They wanted to make it beautiful while keeping things incredibly functional. They wanted to keep this back end nice and tidy, but check this out. You've heard of extending and moving rear spoilers, pushing the cars down. Well, this is an extendable rear diffuser doing the exact opposite. It's increasing the car's um, slipperiness. It's making it more aerodynamic. You don't want it out all the time because small children will, you know, hit their shins on it and it sort of takes away from the car's elegance. So that deploys once the car is on the move. How cool is that? So I think the best way to understand just how crazy this car is, just how much innovative tech there is packed into it is to take a look at some of the tech. So this is the battery from the Mercedes EQXX, 100 kilowatt hours and about the same amount of power as the one you'd find in the Mercedes EQS, but 50% the size and 30% lighter. This is a 100 kilowatt hour battery that you could quite easily fit into a compact car, a Mercedes A-Class, a Mercedes B-Class. When those go electric, which they will very soon, you could pack this gigantic unit into them quite easily. And again, notice no water cooling anywhere. This car doesn't need it because the battery doesn't get that hot, because the car doesn't use that much power, because it doesn't need that much power. It's clever, frugal design. Most of the cooling is done, as I mentioned, via a cooling plate underneath the battery. Literally, a piece of metal on the underside of the car, wind flies past it, gets cold, cools the battery. That's all you need. Brilliant. I think these crazy looking pieces here are the ones that best represent just how completely different the mindset is when designing this car, how completely different the thinking is compared to standard car design. Take this, for example. This is the giant sort of rear panel of the car, which by the way, not especially heavy. This has been designed using extensive computer modeling, basically video games engines, so that every single piece is the exact shape and thickness that it needs to be and absolutely no more holes wherever you can have them to save weight. It's designed, it's designed in a video game. Minimal waste, that's the name of the game here. Look at this, look at this. What's that? That's the bracket for the windscreen wiper. Presumably the windscreen wipers were a bit of an afterthought, it being a concept car, so there was not very much space left. So they went into the games engine and they designed the piece that used all the remaining space, one millimeter either side of this in every direction is different componentry. They've used all the remaining space to make this weird and beautiful looking thing. And look at this, look at this. Normal car suspension mount. EQXX suspension mounts. This thing is a spaceship. A few more very cool pieces. This is essentially the rear subframe of the EQXX, which houses that single motor. Not an insanely powerful motor, about 150 kilowatts, equivalent to 200 odd mechanical horsepower. The car doesn't need a lot of power because it's so slippery, and also giving it lots of power would be in contradiction to its you know, efficiency mantra. So I like that. Incidentally, this carbon fiber subframe is a contribution from the Mercedes AMG Formula One team, while that inverter, which has been tweaked to maximize efficiency, is off the Mercedes Formula E car. It does help to have a few motorsport teams 
in your midst. Meanwhile, more weight saving over here. This is a steel brake disc. This is the EQXX's aluminum brake disc. 13 kilos saved at each corner. This is my favorite. This is unbelievable. Can you guess what it is? This is a glass fiber spring. Steel springs, so yesterday. Glass fiber, baby. 75% weight reduction. And look, it's just a piece of art. Right, welcome to the inside of the EQXX. I can't quite believe they're letting me sit in this thing, but here I am in the one-of-a-kind concept car. Worth noting, this is a four-door, four-seater. Granted, you, you'd have to be a bit short on legs to fit in the back as it stands, but again, concept car. What you notice in here is a few of the details that represent the meticulous lengths they've gone to to maximise the efficiency of this vehicle. I'll give you a perfect example. Here we have a full-width uh, digital display. Now, most electric cars have big screens these days. The thing about big screens is they kind of use a lot of energy, don't they? Well, what Mercedes has very cleverly devised with this screen is something called local dimming zones. That is to say, any section of the screen that's black, instead of projecting black, it just turns off. It's kind of beautifully simple when you think about it. And in keeping with that, they've ensure that they design the user interface in a way that favors lots of black so that lots of the screen is turned off at any given time. But they've done it in a way that is nonetheless beautiful. It's really, really cool. Another really fun feature that I like. Efficiency is key with this vehicle, but there's no point in inventing a really efficient car if the driver is going to drive it like an idiot and undo all your hard work. So Mercedes has designed software that encourages you as a driver to be as efficient as possible. And they don't want to do it in a naggy way, they want to do it in a fun, gamified way. And here's how they've done that. I have a blue circle in front of me with my speedometer in. And this circle will change in the way it looks based on my driving habits. If I'm driving as efficiently as possible, I will see basically a perfect eclipse in front of me. If my driving is getting a little bit too spicy, um, it'll go a bit red and you can kind of see this blurry color emerging from behind it. And like I say, it's gamified. You want the cool blue clean line circle. If things get all red and angry and sort of out of focus, then you know you need to, um, well, chill out a bit with your right foot. 100% vegan interior in here with some really interesting materials used. I'll give you a few examples. This is cactus leather on the seats and it's very soft. This is recycled bamboo fiber making up these thick, fluffy uh, floor mats. I want these in my bathroom. What else? These door pulls, you ready? This is lab grown silk. And then these 3D printed spikes on the door, which are fascinating to look at. And they sort of change colour depending on what angle you're looking at them from. Really beautiful. Concluding thoughts on this car, honestly, my brain is mush at this stage. The amount of mind-blowing information that I've taken in in the last couple of hours, I'm, I need to lie down after all of this. What an astonishing vehicle. And you know what? This is the sort of concept car that I can get behind. It's not, ooh, isn't it pretty, sits on a stand only to go into some cupboard somewhere for the rest of time. No, this car showcases a bunch of actual technologies that you are going to see on future Mercedes products. Things, everything from the innovative choice of materials in the cabin to the really, really efficiently designed infotainment system to the general construction of the thing and the amount of groundbreaking methods at play there. But the big one for me is the overarching emphasis on efficiency. There needs to be a mindset change in car design moving into this electric era because it doesn't really make sense to just shove big batteries into blobby SUVs. It's wasteful. Electric cars should be frugal. They should use what they have intelligently. And that is what this car represents while still being incredibly desirable and luxurious and beautiful. <sighs> what a thing. There we have it. The Mercedes EQXX. We are very lucky to have had this early look at this car. Let us know what you think of it down below. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.
Really hope you enjoyed that. We're so lucky to have Jack on board. I mean, OK, he's very tall, much taller than me, but he's an amazing guy. Really knows his stuff. Just knows a lot about cars, which is I really, really appreciate. Here's another episode that Jack did, an absolute classic. Do have a look at that. That's our latest episode just come out. Up there, you can subscribe to Fully Charged Show. And up there, you can support us on Patreon. Thank you.